Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we're having jelly printing fun again. Yay, my favorite. Um, last week we've done some background pages using leaves um, and they turn out really beautiful. I'm really happy about them and I digitized them and the link to the digital kit is in the description box below as well as the video that one and the one for making jelly plate because if you like to join me uh, with my jelly printing fun and you don't have a jelly plate you can make one yourself uh, really it's really affordable and the link to that video is down below as well just want to mention that i also created a playlist where i will be putting all the jelly printing related videos in so if you've missed any you can always go back and check them out all right so today we're not going to make background pages today we are going to make pages for our journals that have writing space um, assigned to them and this is what i mean for example this is my page i'm using this really bright color paper this orange one just to demonstrate and that's a5 actually it's a4 when you fold in half and for example on this page just give me a second you want to have your design all the way around and you want the area in the middle to be for your writing. This is what I mean. We're going to make something like that, but a few different ones. We're going to be using leaves again. I got some fern. I'm dying to try it. We were driving in the countryside yesterday and I saw some on the side of the road and I said to my husband, you have to stop the car. I have to get some because I really wanted to um, do something with these and um, you can have any leaves you like whatever you can find and also we're going to use tea or coffee or rust dyed papers onion skin whatever you have just papers that are already dyed so you don't have to do the background and you'll need some pickup paper cleanup paper whatever you want to call it it's a cheap paper that you get um I think they use them in butcher shops or delis and things like that so it's just a thin paper that you will use to pick up the negative space and if you've done some printing already and you have some uh, that already have uh, paint that's fine we can reuse them i always reuse them and i keep reusing them they, until they just really full and can't take any more paint we are going to use just scrap paper see this is scrap paper that we're going to tear into shapes that we want to have the writing space on our page. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense. I'll just start doing it and perhaps you will see what I mean. Another thing is you probably noticed these um, registration marks on my plate. This is because I want to be able to put my paper approximately at the right spot because my jelly plate is bigger than A4. But if this is the middle of the paper. I want to know where the middle is here. You know what I mean? So I want to be able to put it in approximately the same spot every time. And you'll see why. Let's start with the most simple one. This is just a scrap piece of paper that I tore. And if I open my page up, this is what I mean. I want to have the design all the way around. But I want this area here to stay clear of the paint or the leaves or anything. I just want to have that area there. So what I'll do, I'll just fold this. Oops. So I know that's the middle approximately. I'm going to place it onto my jelly plate. But I'm going to place it this way because sometimes jelly plate is a little bit moist and I don't want any of this um, printing to transfer because it can happen, you know. <laughs> so I hope this is approximately the middle. So I'm going to place that there because I want to protect that surface. I don't want any paint on that surface. All right. So that's going to stay like that. Now I'm going to mix the color and I want to get the color as close as that. So I'm using some greens here and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre so i'm going to mix the color and i'm going to put the color all the way around i mean i can put it on top of this that's fine but it's 
not uh, necessary. Just want to have a variety of greens here. nice colors so we're going around so this paper in the middle actually serves as a stencil And we're not going to touch it now, we're going to leave it. Now we're going to take our leaves, these ones, and we are going to place them so that this part is down. So whatever you want to do this like that. some of these um, maybe I'll do that doesn't matter if they go over this page because that's going to stay clean oops there's a bug here it's a spider that I think that's pretty enough so now we're going to do the same as we did in the last session we're going to take a thin of paper and we're going to place it over just pick up the negative space and this pan I picked up yesterday and I did not put it in the water so it started to dry a little bit Made a hole in the paper here. I hope it doesn't damage my jelly plate. Okay. Let's see. So I'm just going gently around. areas in between. I think there's a little bit here. So I'm just going to take another clean sheet of paper. And get as much as I can. That's good. You see that there was quite a bit left there. All right, now I can take these off. They're looking good. And we can take this off as well. That's it. Now we take our pick of paper. And this is what, where these marks come in handy. I hope so. so uh, I'm going to use this one again, but this way, so I don't want to get that side dirty.
I like it. It's looking really good. It has a thin line around. Oops, just a bit stuck to my jelly plate. So I hope you understand now what I'm trying to achieve here. So if you put this, if you imagine this in a journal, it's a bit curling up a bit now. So you have the decorative border around with leaves and you know whatever you're using. And then you have this area for writing. That's the basics. So now we're going to try with all different uh, positions of this paper and the shapes and sizes. The one that I haven't tried before and I'm dying to try is the circle. So basically do a circle and fold in half and I just tore the edges. So I'm going to place it again. This is the middle, I think. So this time around, I want the area around to be clean and I want the print in the middle. That's why I'm using this paper with a hole in the middle. Okay. So this time I'm putting the color only in the middle. And the paper serves as stencil. So I'm going to get the fern and I'm going to arrange it. The plants the way I think it would look good. I think that's pretty good. Again, we're going to take this paper. I think this side is dry. And we're going to place it and try to pick up And we have ourselves a circle. Okay, again, take your pickup paper and try to align it so that the circle is approximately in the middle. I think hands are cool enough. I don't need to put another paper over because there's no paint around it. Just the middle. Pretty. So I want to show you now an inverted version of this. So we had the page with the hole in the middle, but now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to use that circle that I actually tore off that um, stencil. And I'm going to place that circle in the middle. Okay. So now I'm going to put the color all the way around that circular shape. <laughs> My squeaky roller again. <laughs> it's terrible. Arrange the fern all the way around here. I think 
I want I want it kind of going all the way like this in all directions So now again, we pick up the negative space. I'm just reusing this because it's clean on that side. Because there is some paint around, I'm going to again reuse this place. This is my favorite so far. Oh, I love it. I really love it. I want to do this. Okay. Something like this. Okay. So I need to place those two. Perhaps like that. Hope this doesn't transfer. We add the color. Maybe we'll just place them like that. Let's pick it up. somewhere and I can use them maybe stencil something on top just as a background let's use this coffee dyed paper again we have to place it approximately in the middle
Oh, I love this one too. It's so pretty. This paper is a little bit uh, different color, so the green really stands out. I love it. In the first example, we had the paper something like this. But now I want to do it uh, like this. So that I can have design on, on both sides and have an empty space in the middle. And now we add color on either side. <laughs> I love it. It's really pretty, this one as well. I really like it. It's like a side border on this one. Beautiful. This time, I think we can have design in the middle and clean on the side. And I will align this here. And now I'm going to add the color. So exciting every time I have to reveal a print. Oh, I love it. I love this one. I really do. It's pretty beautiful. Okay, what we haven't tried is having an empty area from here to here and just the border on top and the bottom. I don't think we've tried that. Let's try that one. Just like that. And I'm going to add color here and here first. Very interesting. I like this one too. I'm very happy with these prints. Let's imagine now our uh, paper has like little toned stickers like this. Something like that. So I want to design a page like that. So now we place the color around these.
ways up this way. I love it. It's cute, isn't it? You can have little pictures there or writing or some butterflies maybe. Oops, got stuck at the back. But it's really a great idea, I think. It's really pretty. We've done eight prints so far and I prepared to do ten. And I have this one here, which is just basically uh, something that I either put down the bottom and have the print on top or put it at the top and have the print down the bottom um, either way. So I think I'm going to do this and have the print down the bottom. Let's get the color. I'm actually thinking now I should have done the other way around but I will design it upside down because I really like to see the top bits here if I do that then it's going to be weird I think so I'm going to design it upside down wow it's really pretty i'm thinking i should do one with with just full um, print without any stencils just with fern i'm going to do that probably off the camera but yeah i really love it this one's great too great page to add pockets down the bottom i prepared to do one more um something like this if you have a writing spot here or there either way so I can place them like this or like that on either side or maybe I can do this to have one of each so somewhere here somewhere here okay let's mix the color We go. Oh, it's the other way around. Sorry. I love it. It's really, really pretty. Great area for writing, and the rest is these lovely green colors. Okay, I will let these dry, and then we'll go through them and see what we created. All right, I'm back. I'm not sure if these are all stacked in order as we've done them, but it doesn't really matter. So here we go. The first one, the second, the third. Now I'll get lost. I don't know which was next, so <laughs> I only remember the first three. Here we go. And this one. Right. and after I finished recording these, I created
created another one with just full background and I scanned them all in and I digitized them and I created a digital kit but what I did I for each page I created a page with lines so there's like 22 pages this is what I mean that's the original that's with lines original and then with lines and you can fold these and place them in a journal you know what to do but just saying that's with lines that's the original that one's with lines again that one that one oh i love this one my favorite i think and this one's kind of interesting as well put the lines there as well and in addition there's this full background one and the full that background that is just plain color and one with just lines and with that in the middle so there is 24 pages in total in this digital kit and it is in my Etsy shop as we speak all right so I hope you enjoyed this and I'm hoping you, you're willing to try uh, creating pages for yourself in this style. You can use anything. It doesn't even have to be um, leaves. It could be anything that you're going to use as stencils. Another thing I forgot to mention and I just remembered now. Like I used torn pieces of paper to create this effect. But you don't have to. You can use just uh, straight edges. If you have one of those scissors, you can... You can create edge like that. You can use tags, for example. You can use, uh, if you have corner cutters, you can do that, have that kind of finish. Or something like this with your die cuts. Um, another thing is, yeah, you can cut out heart shapes, uh, circular shapes, um, hexagon shapes, you know, have these all around. What else? You can use doilies if you have nice doilies you can use them as stencils as well so even little stickers like posted stickers you know put them all around and place the leaves and you know how it goes anyway so there are just some ideas and you basically take it and make it work for you whatever style you're after mine is more like a grungy nature themed journal but it can be anything really Thank you so much for watching. I hope I see you soon in the next episode of Jelly Printing Fun. Bye for now.